This is Chris from Atlantic Outboard, and this is your digital delivery of your Pursuit C238. Now, if you're trailering this boat before you go to launch it, the first thing you want to do is ensure that your drain plug is installed. You do not want to launch the boat without the drain plug. Um, next, you're most likely going to be using your trailer support. Um, before you put the boat in the water, you want to turn on your battery switch, tilt the motor all the way up, and then flip up this trailer support. That will allow the motor to go all the way down. Let's go take a look inside the boat. Getting ready for a day on the water in your Pursuit C238, the first thing you want to do is turn on your battery switch. So you open up your head compartment door, and on the back bulkhead, you can see at 12 o'clock position, it's in the off position. If you turn it to 3 o'clock, now you have battery power. Now, if you ever are running low on batteries, somebody leaves something on, and you're just trying to get the motor started, you can always combine the batteries, turn it past the on position. That'll take all the power supply and turn it on so you can try to get that motor started. Once the motor is started, it will recharge those batteries. Next to the battery switch is your windlass breaker. If you ever hang up on something operating your anchor with your windlass and it trips the breaker and stops working, you want to go reset that breaker. Now let's go up to the helm and we'll show you your next steps. Now that you have your battery switch on, the first thing you want to do is click into place your safety lanyard. Now the boat will not start without that safety lanyard. The motor will crank and give an error code if you don't have that installed. So the first thing you want to do is slip the horseshoe shaped safety lanyard in there and then you can start your motor. Up on your dash here you have overhead lighting switching um, and you can see a perfect example how one's red one's white. That's very common. To make that go back in sync you simply Hold the button down, reset it, and now you can see they're both the same color. You have a cockpit light switch that'll illuminate the courtesy lights throughout the cockpit. You'll have spreader lights that'll illuminate these lights in the back. You have a blank accessory switch. If we add components down the road and you need a place to, to hook them up, you could use that accessory switching. Um, if the boat is equipped with the power steering option, this would be your switch. Now this is a generic panel, so you will have a power steering switch whether or not you have the power steering pump. So if you chose that power steering option, you would turn it on there. You can always keep that on. Horn self-explanatory. Fresh water, to use any of the fresh water systems, um, your shower, anything like that, you're gonna have to turn that switch on to pressurize that fresh water system. Same thing with the salt water system. You flip that switch on, it'll pump, uh, pressurize that salt water pump so you can use your salt water wash down. To uh, turn on your live well, you throw a fish in your live well, you simply come up here, hit this switch, it'll pump salt water into the live well, and then your aft bilge pump switch. Now, the bilge pump is hardwired direct to the battery, so if your battery switch is off and you have water in the bilge, it will pump it over still as long as it reaches enough water to raise that float switch. Now, if you're washing the boat or you know there's a little residual water in there, you could always manually turn that pump on and it'll turn the pump on to pump any residual water that may be in the bilge out. You just don't want to forget to shut that switch off. And then you also have another accessory switch, blank accessory switch that you can tie in additional items down the road. Um, right next to it you have uh, some main resets. If you ever the stereo stops working or something you could try just resetting these these are just little push in if you don't feel any resistance then the breaker's not tripped um, under this cover you have your stereo with bluetooth it's very simple to pair your bluetooth you can use xm uh sirius if you install an antenna it is ready to go for that it also has fm ready to go um, most people nowadays are just pairing their bluetooth if you're ever having any trouble pairing your bluetooth um, simply go on YouTube and they'll walk you through step by step. Now your shifter, this is a digital 300 Yamaha. So uh, when the handle is lined perfectly with the Yamaha label, you're in neutral. You click it one click into forward. Um, now the propeller is turning to move the boat forward. As the farther you push it, the more horsepower you're going to give that. You can feel it click back into neutral aligned with the Yamaha and then you can put it in reverse. You have two charge points. You have a USB and a cigarette lighter. Here's your trim tab indicators. They are backlit to let you know what position those trim tabs are in. Then your helm is a tilt helm. You simply push this button in and it'll let you articulate your steering wheel. Now this dash is a large enough dash where you could put large electronics. You will have a separate power switch for your electronics. 
and then under this cover is the gauge for your Yamaha. It's going to give you fuel capacity, RPM, fuel burn, uh, battery voltage, all the data for the motor will be displayed there. Um, you can see some snaps for the dash cover that comes with this boat and then the leaning post here has some beautiful high bolstered backrests with flip up and down armrests and this will also come with a cover all of umbrella. you have a beautiful toe kick here so if you're sitting place to rest your feet you have beautiful powder coated aluminum storage up above with a friction hinge some people think that they're going to break it but you're not it does have a friction hinge to keep that open um, in the bow of your pursuit c238 is your anchor locker now you can operate this windlass from the helm or from up front. You have a remote to operate it from up here. So before you operate your windlass, you're going to want to take your safety lanyard off. Okay. And make sure you reinstall that when you're done. After you deploy the anchor, it sets up on the bottom. Uh, you're going to take your road and cleat it off to your cleat here. You don't want all the force of that anchor holding on the windlass itself. You do have port and starboard navigation lights, pull up cleats. You have a beautiful step up here to access this without having to step high up on your storage. You do have storage underneath each seat here. The bow seating backrests, very simple. When you're not using them, they lay side, uh, against the side here. When you wanna use them, you lift up and they will rotate forward like so. Inside your head compartment, you have your head with the pump out option. You have a toilet paper holder. Everything's very simple. You can spray bleach and hose it down. There is a drain in there. And then you have additional access to get behind the dash for electronics install. That's mostly for service. Let's go take a look at the cockpit of the boat. On the back of your head door is the storage for the forward sun pad filler. Uh, there's a couple turnbuckles and Velcro that would come off and it would slide into place up here and it would turn that whole bow area into a sunbed. Um, now in the bilge or machinery space in the back of this boat, you have your live well pump, you have a drain. Now these both are hooked to through holes. It's very important for boat owners to understand where their through hole valve is in case of an emergency. Now the valve gives you the ability to isolate to shut the, the valve in case of an emergency. So if you were to be taking on water and not knowing where it would come from, you simply reach down and you can close this green handled valve. Same thing on this one. Pursuit's very good about labeling everything. They have a label on that through hole for wash down pickup. This boat is equipped with a power steering. So you do have a power steering pump and then in the far back is your bilge pump. Now to access that bilge pump, you can easily go through these inspection plates in the engine well of your transom. So it's mostly for service. If you ever get debris and that bilge pump's running, you can unscrew that and spray your hose directly at it to clear that debris. Now on the cockpit deck of your Pursuit C238, you'll see these inspection plates here. Now those are service inspection plates to access your fuel valves. You as a boat owner, you shouldn't have to go in there, um, but I want you to understand what those are. Now your live well is here. You catch a fish, simply throw it in there, um, flip the switch, and it'll start pumping some salt water into your live well. Under here you have your fresh water wash down shower. This simply comes out. As long as you have the pump switch on on the dash, your fresh water will work. Same with the, the raw water. If you want to use a hose, you thread it on there and you could spray off debris off the deck, but you have to have your raw water wash down switch on the dash on. You have a little bit of tool storage here for a knife, hang your fishing lures to dry them out after a fishing trip. Moving forward, you have your fuel fill. This simply unscrews fuel nozzle in there and then you can begin fueling your boat. On the port side bow of your Pursuit C238 is your fresh water fill. You would unscrew this, stick your, your fresh water hose in there from the dock and just let it run until it overflows to fill that. This is the waste pump out. So to pump out your head compartment, you would go to your fuel dock or your 
um, pump out service would take their suction cup hose hook it to there and it would suck your waste out you have an inspection plate here that's just for service and then you have a jl subwoofer for your stereo